This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, you and I are trying to steal some stuff. We have stolen some goods, sweets or sours, and we put them in a bag and we are trying to escape. But we're not just trying to escape from anything. There are these fences that we are trying to fit us and our bags through to pay dirt. Today we're looking at Smugglers. This is from Cosmos. In the US, it's from Thames and Cosmos. Uh, this is for two to four players. Takes about 30 minutes, and it's a very unique game. Let me show you. In Smugglers, you'll be able to pick your color by taking one of these player shields where you'll be hiding gems behind, and you also get some putty of that color. Now behind your shield, each player will get three gems. A uh, sweet, a salty, and a stink bomb, along with that clay we talked about. Now what you're trying to do is be the first person to get either seven of these yellow uh, salty treats, or seven of these sweet treats, or five of both. Now the game works is you'll be uh, basically first you'll roll the die and you will move this this guy however many you've rolled. If you roll a red number, you won't know what size ball you're trying to get through this chute. Basically, if it's red, everyone would go to the next phase without knowing where it is, and then later on you would actually roll and figure out how much forward he goes. But right now, let's go here. Everyone knows they've got to have a ball that fits this size, which is going to fit through this gate. Now, then we start the timer. So this time we would get started and everybody would take this and what they're trying to do is make it the biggest you possibly can and you're going to take one of these things and put it in here and you're basically going to put it in the ball and then you're going to make this as round as possible. Now you're trying to make it the biggest size you possibly can and fit through that hole. So we go like this and we make it long and as soon as uh, this is over nobody can add or subtract any but you can continue to try to round it out. Now one at a time, players will take their ball, they'll place it here, and they will roll it down in hopes that it fit. If it fits, they will place it on the bar stool, any one of these bar stools. If it does not fit, they get one chance to try to get it back and just round it out a little bit more and try to get it there. And if it still doesn't go through, they will place it over here. Once has this been completed, let's say these two made it past and these two didn't. Now what would happen is that these two people would see who is the biggest of these, meaning they were the largest one that got through. It's one of my favorite parts of the game. If you're not sure, you actually put them here in the holes and it essentially it will weigh them. And whichever one side has gone down, in this case it's this one, is the heavier one. But if this one was heavier, it would go down. It's a fun way to measure to see who is heavier. At this place, first place goes in the one chair, and second place goes in the second chair. Now, if it's a two-player game, only one will be in the chair, and the other one will be basically in the cellar. And if no players got through, then you just start a new round. Now, this player gets to decide which one he looks at first, and he looks at this one, and he says, Hey, I think this player stole, is trying to smuggle a, a sour, a yellow one. So this player would then pass it over, he would reveal, and indeed he was trying to steal a sour. If that's the case, then the player who guessed correctly gets to place any of these sour. Now, what's on these don't matter. It's just really yellow or red. Uh, but this player would get to put one of these in front of their shield. This player would take this back and their clay back behind their shield. The next player would then get to ask this player. If there was only one here, uh, this player would, would get to ask, you know, which uh, one of these two he would want to do. But in this case, this player would then get to ask this player, and a similar thing would happen. Once that happens, this player gets to reveal what he had, and then so does this player, and they get one of those. So this player now gets one of these as well, and this player would get whatever they got. So over the course of the game, you'll be getting some things, which will make it interesting as to what people will think that you're getting, and then you try to bluff them and double bluff them. Now, the stink bomb works a little different. If I accurately guessed that they had the stink bomb in their smuggled ball, I would just take this and put it behind my shield and I can use it later. If I had said, well, I think you have uh, a sweet and they had this, they would get to take any one of the tokens from in front of me and steal it and put it in front of themselves. And then this would go out of the game. It's sort of a one-time use. 
Now, if at the end of the round, you were the one that was actually doing the guessing because you made it the chair, you made it through, and you actually had one of these in front, in, inside of here, you may also take one of the tokens of your choice from somebody else. And then we will continue again, rolling the dice, moving this and starting over until again, one player has either seven of any of the two types of treats or five of both. Well, there is Smugglers, and I gotta say, this game is quite unique. A lot of time we review so many games, we see the same things regurgitated over and over. So a lot of times things are improved upon, sometimes, things, sometimes they take certain things and twist them just a little bit, things are new. This is something completely different, and I love seeing things like this. It's just really fun when you're doing this, and you're making the balls, and you're fitting them through, and you're trying to roll them through, and you're laughing at everybody what doesn't go through. And then when they do go through and you guess wrong and people, ah, ha, 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 this is a lot of fun for families and kids. Now, I could probably pull this out with my gamer friends and they would play it once and they'd have a great time. Is it going to be the one they want to pull out every week? Absolutely not. But that's not who this market is for. But gamers can like this game too, which is cool. But families and kids love this game. I mean, it's, it's so fun to try to when the kids can win over on their parents and, ha, ah, you opened my stink bomb, I get to steal something from you. Uh, or trying to, you know, the weighing of this is, is really fun. When you have those two balls, you're trying to figure out which one's the bigger one, and you weigh them out. A lot of fun there. Again, this game is really unique. Um, I was really impressed in the sort of that putty stuff that was in this game because it's not greasy. Um, and it doesn't really, it's really easy to pull apart. Some really interesting study, you know, stuff went into this to make this work well. Uh, and I really like it. It's so different uh, that I just love it. It's quick. People start getting those, those sweets and sours and you think, hey, he's got four sweets and one sour. He has to go for the sweet. Nope, went for the sour. Now he's catching up. Now he only needs five of each. Uh, and so it's really cool, that little guessing game, but you're trying to have the biggest one that you can to go through there, or you might try to mess them up and purposely put too big of a one with the stink bomb. Uh, thinking that they might not get it and then you can steal one of theirs. Really interesting design here. I really like it. It's very unique. It's refreshing to see something so new here and it's quick. Uh, and this is the, the this is from you know the, the designer of Settlers of Catan and his son, who the last game they built I loved too. That was uh, Tumult, Tumult Royale, another great family game. This one's a, probably a little bit less for gamers than that other one, but still a ton of fun, one I can highly recommend. And because it is so unique, and then I can pull this out with kids when they come over. Uh, I'm going to keep this one because it's just so different. And for that, let's induct it into my gaming library with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.